Hello. Hi. Hi, is this Mayim? This is. Hi, this is Shiloh Johnson. Hello. Um, I'm with EverydayFamily.com. We're a pregnancy and parenting website. Oh, cool. Yeah, and we just wanted to uh, talk to you today a little bit about the STEM-related fields and, and girls and getting them involved. Um, Great. But to go back to the beginning and start, I just wanted to talk to you about your career and where you're at. I know I watched you many years ago on Blossom and Beaches, but I haven't seen you in your new, new stuff lately. Uh, do you want me to just, <laughs> I can tell you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, go ahead and tell me. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, let's see, Blossom ended when I was 19 years old. I actually took 12 years off to get an undergraduate wow. degree in neuroscience and uh, then a PhD in neuroscience. I had my first son in graduate school. He's now seven. And oh, wow. my second son right after my PhD, and he's now four. And wow. kind of started auditioning here and there, but also taught in neuroscience for many years. But started auditioning and was cast in The Big Bang Theory um, nice. when my second son was about two. And this is my third full year on The Big Bang right. Theory. I was nominated for an Emmy last year, which is super exciting. Congratulations. And thank yeah. you. The Big Bang Theory is the number one comedy in America. We like to say wow. that. Wow. <laughs> I think I need to watch it then. I'm, you you I'm, may. I, you know, yeah. we're also in syndication. So. <laughs> So how did you go from acting to neuroscience? How, how did you make that leap? I fell in love with science when I was actually on the set of Blossom. I was being tutored for all of my oh. subjects in high school, and I had an amazing tutor in biology. She was then a dental student at UCLA, and she was really the first woman that I could, I guess, imagine as a role model. And she was so passionate and excited about biology and gave me the confidence to believe that I could do it, even if I wasn't, quote, a natural. And it was really her confidence in me that inspired me to go ahead and, and pursue my degrees. That's amazing. It's, it's really amazing what teachers can, you know, what influence they can be on children and, yeah, and, and tutors and, and people that you wouldn't even necessarily expect to be such an influence. Sure, but I, right, but I think it's also important to point out that for a lot of girls, having a female role model is especially mm -hmm. important. Um, the STEM fields, which is science, technology, engineering, and math, these are fields mm -hmm. that, that women are typically underrepresented in, um, kind of historically, and um, part of me partnering with DeVry University and the Her World Initiative is to really turn that around and give a positive association for girls with with these fields and specifically to let them hear from women who are excited and passionate about STEM fields. Mm -hmm. No, I agree. I agree. I have, I have a daughter myself. She's mm -hmm. only 20 months right now, so we've got a Never little bit of time. Never too young to but, start. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, exactly. I, I want to make sure that she is excited about that kind of stuff. I'm, I'm, my background is actually in accounting, which is mm -hmm. you know, somewhat of that kind of a Got degree. a lot of math, yep. <laughs> yes, exactly. And it, it was always, though, growing up and, and being you know, into math and stuff, I was around a lot of boys. Not sure. so many girls are involved in that. And mm -hmm. so I'd love to take a part in um, you know, trying to help encourage girls to get more involved. Mm -hmm. Um, it says here that there's going to be a lot more of that type of, you know, jobs into science and technology in the future. So what are the steps that we can take with our young girls to kind of push them in that direction or encourage them, I should say? Yeah, I mean, I, I think introducing the STEM fields equally and presenting them equally to girls as young as possible is extremely mm -hmm. important. But especially things like the Her World Initiative targeting girls when they're in that, those decision-making years and when they're mm -hmm. in high school and when they're in the best way open to kind of everything. Um, I think that's especially important. The devry.edu forward slash STEM Ready website um, has other ideas and other opportunities for girls. But again, I think starting as early as possible and presenting STEM fields equally and also kind of changing the cultural perceptions of what those careers can look like is super important. I agree. I actually saw um, a blog post not too long ago about a new toy that was created by a female engineer. I have already pre-ordered um, it, yes. Goldie I know Blocks? Exactly. Yep, I yes. have ordered Goldie Blocks. It's an amazing yes, story. I have too. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I think great. that's amazing, you know, just taking the idea that, you know, things like Legos and toys that are traditionally boy toys mm -hmm. and are boy colors and just kind of making it appeal to girls and realizing that boys and girls tend to think differently in the way that they, well, you know, structure well, their thought you know, process. Speaking as a neuroscientist, uh, boys and girls oh, are sure. different. Um, our brains are different. But there's a tremendous amount um, that, that is open, available, and accessible to both boys and girls. So absolutely, there are cultural distinctions between what mm -hmm. boys do and what girls tend to do. Um, but yep. in terms of STEM fields, this is something that is open absolutely equally to boys and girls. And I think what's important about you know, seeing female role models, I mean, honestly,
Leslie, the woman who created Goldie Blocks, I consider her a role model of mine um, mm -hmm. to be able to say that we need to make things that are palatable to girls, but it doesn't mean that they can't also serve the same function as yes. when those toys are presented for boys. Exactly, exactly. You want to you appeal to them, but ultimately it's the same it's the same. It's the same um, universe, whether you're male exactly. or female. <laughs> exactly, exactly. I love that. So what advice would you give to young girls who maybe don't have the self-esteem or the, you know, don't think they can do it? They're, they're, they're down on themselves about this. They think they just can't get there. Well, I think there's a tremendous amount of resources, especially available to girls now, that were not available even when I was in school. And I think the internet is a wonderful place to start poking around. Mm -hmm. I think it's important to learn about the variety of careers that are available in STEM and to be able to see that it's not just sitting in a laboratory by yourself. It's not just being a doctor, which I didn't have the grades to get to med school, but there's a <laughs> tremendous amount of other opportunities in the STEM field that, um, that it's never too young, again, to start looking into. In addition, it's important to have a mentor, but that doesn't need to be anything formal or structured. If you see someone, male or female, who who's doing a job that looks interesting, ask them how they got there, ask them what it took to get there, ask them what their life is like on a daily basis, and see how rich the STEM world is when you choose a career in STEM, absolutely. That's great, that's great. Um, and how, how did you get involved in the Her, Her World Initiative? Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, I've been working with Texas Instruments for several years um, to encourage STEM education, but DeVry University approached me, and I'm thrilled to be partnering with them this March um, for Her World. So um, really honored to be considered a female role model and to be able to get my story out there to high school girls. Yeah, that's going to be great. Um, so I guess the last thing is just where can we go for more information? I would suggest devry.edu forward slash STEM ready. Okay, awesome. Well, thank you so much. I know our members, you know, we've got over 4 million members, and most of them are moms of small or young children. Yep. Um, <laughs> and probably a good number of them have girls. So <laughs> I think this is an important message to get across to them. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for your time. Bye. Bye.